So this is a brief video about keyboards, okay? And this is a keyboard I've added to this retro computer. And it's sort of your classic uh, PC keyboard using a PS2 port. And you can see if I type one, you see one on the screen, two, I can enter it. If I do dot S, it'll print the stack showing that it's got that on the stack. And if I do plus, you know, it'll then do the addition. Okay. So how do PC keyboards work? Well, they're, they're pretty easy to interface to a computer. Okay. So if we go over here, what you're going to see, let me move this out of the way. So you'll see with the PS2 jack right here, and you'll see four cables. And those four cables are hooked up to four, two GPIO pins and grounded power. So one is the clock line, and the other one is the data line, and then ground and power, five volts plus ground. So that those data lines are out of my 6522, and I, it's a 6502 machine, so I've got a library that I uh, have online that knows how to talk the PS2 keyboard protocol, so you have a keyboard added to your computer without a lot of fuss, okay? And that's really handy because now you have the ability to enter in pretty much any kind of data. And it's, it's uh, a lot easier than the old days. And I'm going to talk very briefly about the old days. This is a hex membrane keypad. And you'll see it's got a little ribbon cable. Uh, how it would work in the old days is you could have any kind of keyboard, like you'd have an alphanumeric keyboard matrix or a hex keyboard matrix. They work pretty much the same way. Uh, you have to do... Uh, essentially, you'd use your I.O. pins on your 6522s to sweep the columns and read the rows. And there's little diodes in here, probably, that prevent ghosting. Uh, and it works the same way for big keyboards or little keyboards. Uh, but it puts a lot of load on the processor. And using one of these PS2 keyboards is a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to just advance forward so you can sort of see. You know, there's just those GPIO pins there. And there's some 6522 right, right next to it. And just pick up some pins off the 6522 and you can just do the whole thing. Okay. Now, older computers like the Radio Shack Color Computer would be a really good example of a computer that uses uh, exactly the technique I mentioned. If you look at the schematic online, you can see that it has essentially a matrix keyboard, just like, you know, essentially a bigger version of one of these with a real travel keyboard board, but it does the row column sweeps and translates the key scans codes into alpha numeric data. Now, this keyboard returns, you know, serial data, but it's still scan codes. Uh, and you have, you're responsible for turning the scan codes into alpha data. However, there's a lot of libraries online to do that. So I'm going to link in the description to a library that can do that for you. Uh, it, what's great about the library is it even includes a schematic on how to add, 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 connect this thing. So if you look at this, it's really, it's really simplicity personified. It's just a PS2 jack, two 10K resistors, uh, which are pull-ups. They pull up the signal to uh, the 5-volt the rail, and then there's data and clock. The PS2 keyboards are interesting in that the keyboard drives the clock, not the computer. So you basically just, uh, you know, watch the clock line and, and, and figure out what the clock is. There's a way to be bi bi-directional and set the LEDs on it. I haven't dove, delved into the protocol all that much, but that is really a simple way to add a keyboard to a computer. 